this week we're going to be doing the biodecomposition of hydrogen peroxide. The overall equation is shown here, and as you can see, two moles of hydrogen peroxide are going to completely break down into two moles of water and one mole of oxygen gas. Since this reaction would usually happen very slow under normal conditions, we're using yeast, which is a catalyst, to speed up the reaction. Now in the first part of this experiment, we're going to be given a solution that contains 3% H2O2 and 97% water. Before coming to class, you should have calculated the amount of the solution that you're using, and it should give you 40 milliliters of the oxygen. What we're going to be doing with this information is confirming the overall equation and also confirming that the mole to mole ratio is accurate. In the second part, we're working backwards and determining the weight percent of the H2O2 from an unknown. Now, once we get the amount of oxygen, we're going to work and get the moles of the H2O2, which will then give us the grams of H2O2, and finally, you'll determine the weight percent of H2O2, which should be between 1 and 5 percent. In this lab, the supplies that you will need is a sample of H2O2, yeast, a small plastic cup, a rubber stopper, and a culture tube. And refer to page two in your lab packet for this setup. For the first part of our experiment, we're going to measure out our hydrogen peroxide that will give us approximately 40 milliliters of oxygen gas. We're first going to tear our balance. And then using a dropper, going to measure out our hydrogen peroxide. Always remember to record to four decimal places. When you're doing this, make sure not to spill any of the hydrogen peroxide inside the pan. And if you do so, have a tissue handy and clean out the inside of the pan. You'll be provided with a metal scoopula that is covered in black ink at the very tip. So you want to take enough yeast to cover that tip. Then take the plastic cup and put it inside. Holding the side arm test tube, you want to take the plastic cup that contains yeast and place it on top of the culture tube containing H2O2, followed by the rubber stopper. Now disconnect the stopper at the top of the burette and fill the, and fill the system with tap water. Then you want to lower the leveling bulb so that the water level is near the bottom of the burette. Then in the end, reattach the stopper. Now this is how you check for leaks. The water level in the bulb and the burette should be even, and this indicates that the pressure is also the same. Reconnect the tubing to the sidearm. Then adjust the leveling bulb so that its water level matches the water level in the burette. Then you want to take the initial volume reading to two decimal places. The sidearm test tube should now be inverted and gently shaken until the reaction is complete. The water levels in the burette and the bulb are now matched again, and the volume of the water remaining in the burette is read and recorded to two decimal places. 
You do your experiment twice. After that, you're going to take your unknown sample. Be sure to record the number in your lab notebook. And then follow the same procedure again, running the experiment twice. Now remember that this experiment is split into two parts. In the first part, we're confirming the stoichiometry of the overall equation. And in the second part, we're determining the weight percent of H2O2 from an unknown. Now before coming to class, you should have calculated the amount of the solution that you need to yield 40 milliliters of oxygen in the first part of this experiment. Also remember in the laboratory to record the temperature and the barometric pressure because it will be useful in your calculations. Now oxygen is a real gas, however in this experiment we're assuming that it behaves as an ideal gas, which is why we're using the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT. As you can see, we've rearranged the equation to solve for the number of moles of oxygen gas. To run through the units in this equation, P stands for pressure, which needs to be in atmospheres. We solve for atmospheric pressure by subtracting the vapor pressure from the barometric pressure. You can find this information in your lab packet. Second is volume, which is V. We're going to be recording volume in milliliters in the lab, so make sure to convert to liters before plugging it into the equation. N stands for number of moles, which in this case is what we're solving for. T is temperature, and we're going to be recording it in Celsius, so remember to convert to Kelvins before putting it in the equation. And R is our gas constant. In this case, we're going to be using 0 0.0821 liters times atmospheres over K times moles. And as you can see, all the units will cancel out except for our moles, which in this case is what we're solving for. And remember to take the readiness test and read your lab packets.